Hello and welcome again to Crazy Math Productions. Today we're going to be looking at fitting a line to data. Um, there is a particular way that you can do this called the least squares regression. Uh, now that's going to be the more uh, scientific mathematical way to do it. But we're not quite there yet. There's not uh, the, the math um, for us to really catch up there uh, for us to approach that correctly. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to fit a line to data. We're going to come up with the linear model for that data um, in slope intercept form. The thing is, this is going to be really easy or really hard depending on how you make it. So we're going to do our best. This is not the least squares regression. It will get much more accurate when we get to the least squares regression, but we're not there yet. So we're going to start lesson 5-4, exploring data, fitting a line to data. And here's the thing. We're going to go back to, if you've followed Crazy Math Production, you know that we talk about our two major clues. The first one is the slope, and the second one is the y-intercept, m and b, respectively. And we need to keep that in mind as we're developing our lines here. The other thing is, you really want to have a line that's appropriate for your data. For example, if I draw a line here, let me go ahead and zoom in. If I draw this line here, this line may have matched the slope of the points that are graphed. Uh, now, granted, it doesn't have my line of best fit does not have to go through any of the points that are given there. Um, but it's too high, you'll notice. All of the points are below the line. Now my line is too low. It's way below all of the points in the line. Now, you notice I can move my line here. It's a little hard for you to do that if you're looking at your sheet of paper, but you can if you have an ID or a ruler, uh, a clear transparent ruler or a clear ID. You can put the edge of that transparent ruler and be able to visualize exactly where you want your line to go. Now, I also want to play with the slope here. Um, this is too low. This is too high. So, of course, we want it somewhere in the middle. This slope, half the points are above, half the points are below. But this is a really poor judgment of the slope here. So I'd like to try to adjust that slope. The slope should be a little smaller. The absolute value should be smaller. Now, granted, this is a negative slope. Now, that is good, but it's not the best one I could come up with. This is decent. This is getting better. So we're in sort of the optimal range, the best range for this line of best fit. Now, here's where things get interesting. You'll notice, look on the y-axis very carefully on the y-axis. and I'm going to zoom in a little further so you can see this better. This is the point where I'm going to make my life very hard or very easy for myself, and this is very important in this process. Okay, so I said that this is the optimal range here. Now you notice here the y-intercept is between negative 2 and negative 3. Now, I can calculate that, but that's a lot of work. I'd really rather not have to do, deal with that if I don't have to. So if I make my y-intercept negative 2, that's going to be easy. The problem is the line's a little too high. If I make my y-intercept negative 4, you may think, oh, well, there's a point going through that. So that would be the optimal y-intercept. And that may be true. That's a decent y-intercept. But I almost prefer the y-intercept of negative 3. Now, does it matter where it goes through? At this point, no. It does not matter. There's going to be a range, uh, y-intercept of negative 2, negative 3, or negative 4. In that range uh, is going to be sort of your, your optimal y-intercept. If you have a y-intercept of, say, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, now, that would be incorrect. That's just not a good model at all. But if your y-intercept is negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, somewhere in that range, um, all of those answers will be considered correct. So as far as my clues go, I 
slope, we're not sure about yet. But the y-intercept, we're going to go ahead and say is negative 1, 2, 3. Now the same thing is true of the slope. Now what we've done in the past is to simply pick two points. Now don't get caught up in the confusion of thinking that these are the only points that are on this line. In fact, you don't have to pick any points that are uh, in the data set given to you. You can pick quite your own points. So I'm going to use the y-intercept point that I was given here. That's just a good idea. So we're going to use the y-intercept of negative 3. I'd like to have some other point that I can use. Now, on this, the way that this is given, it's probably easier to try to find that point on the x-axis. Now, if you're on lined graph paper, probably the easier thing is to try to find a point where it's going to go over a perfect grid intersection. Uh, if you're on graph paper, you, you see what I'm saying, it goes through a perfect grid intersection. But for this exercise, it's probably going to be easier to look on the x-axis. Now again, I can still play with my line a little bit. Now, if you've graphed your line, you probably wouldn't. Uh, but I'm going to look through on the x-axis. I think, let's see, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. This is closest. Now, even if you've graphed your line, you can still move it just a little bit so that you can come up with a good point for that slope, that second point that you can use. So, the y-intercept is negative 3. We made it easy on ourselves. If it wasn't quite on negative 3, move it so that it is on negative 3. Move that line. The second thing we're going to do is to take that point and choose one more so that we can come up with an easy slope to deal with. Now, negative 3, uh, excuse me, 0, negative 3 is our point. We also have the point negative 1, 2, 3, 4. At this point, I'm going to graph a box. Uh, more specifically, a rectangle. And this is, if you've followed the Crazy Math Productions, this is where we are going on a journey. So we're going to rise, one, two, three. It's positive three. How do we know it's positive? Well, on the y-axis, positive values are up and negative values are down. The same thing is true of the x-axis positive to the right, negative to the left. So now I've gone up three blocks, uh, so I'm going to now go to the left, one, two, three, four blocks, that's going to be negative four. Now remember that M is always the change in the vertical component over the change in the horizontal component, or rise over run. So M equals, the rise was three, the vertical change, over the run was negative 4. And please keep in mind that you have options here. You could say that is negative 3 divided by positive 4, positive 3 divided by negative 4, or just simply negative 3 fourths. As long as there's one negative there, it is equal. They are the same. So now I have m is negative 3 fourths. Well, since I've designed it this way, it's very easy to come up with the equation y equals 3 fourths, excuse me, negative 3 fourths, x plus negative 3. Let's clean that up a little bit. y equals negative 3 fourths, x minus 3. If you look at the directions, it's been very specific. Draw the line of best fit, then state whether it's a negative, positive, or no correlation. If you look at this, we were able to determine that it had this slope downward this slope downward from left to right, that is a negative correlation, so we're going to also say negative correlation. Of course, you could also just write a negative. So two parts to the question, two parts to the answer. Again, keep in mind, this is very important, at this stage in the game, until we get to least squares regression, which will be later uh, in um, your math um, journey here, until you get to least squares regression, you've got a range. For example, um, negative three-fifths, uh, negative two-fifths, negative uh, one-half, that would be negative three-sixths. All of those if, are going to be in the same range there for the slope, so those would be all correct answers. 
if you had negative three, negative three and a half, negative two and a half, even negative two or negative four, all of these values of the y-intercept would be considered correct as long as it's with a certain tolerance, uh, positive negative tolerance. Uh, you can go up a little bit, down a little bit. Um, you don't want to go a huge amount. For example, if this were positive three, no, that doesn't work. That's way outside of the um, designated tolerance. So you have some play. You can uh, move this line quite a bit. Well, I won't say quite a bit, but you can move this line a little bit in each direction. What you want to do is to make sure that you pick a line that's easy to come up with an equation for. So really, this is as hard or as easy as you make it. Now, I would strongly encourage you, at this point, please do pause the video. Try to do this on your own or on the paper. Could, of course, if you don't have the paper, you could do a screen capture, print it in uh, an associated uh, document, and then just um, do this by yourself. Try this on your own and try to see what you do. Again, yours may be off a little bit from mine because there is a little bit of tolerance uh, either way, positive or negative there. Okay, let's go ahead and start. See how you did. The close, we have the slope, we have the y-intercept. I'm going to start with my line. Uh, I'll just give a sketch here. Again, use a clear ruler or maybe an ID card, depending on the school you're in. At this point, I can sort of play with this. All right, um, that would be a positive 2 y-intercept there, positive 1, positive 2. Um, that does work. That's probably a little high. Let's move it down a little bit. Positive 1 y-intercept. That looks a little better. So I'm going to say my y-intercept is positive 1. I'm also going to mark that. That's going to be my first of two points that I'm going to use. The other point probably is easier to find from the x-axis here, um, since we have this sort of uh, cortic plane. Cartesian plane. And notice, the way I've graphed this, it doesn't go exactly through negative 1, but it's close enough. We're going to go ahead and make it that, just so that it's easier to come up with the equation. Again, I have a certain range, a certain tolerance, uh, bigger or smaller, uh, for my equation that will still be correct, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use these two points for my slope, for my major clue that I'm trying to find. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw my box. I'm going to rise positive 1. So rise positive 1 and run also positive 1. Notice it doesn't look like I'm going the same amount, but these uh, horizontal uh, tick marks are much wider than the vertical tick mark, so that's what that little distortion you're seeing. We're going to rise positive 1, and we're going to run positive 1. So m equals rise over run. The rise is positive 1. The run is positive 1. So rise over run, positive 1 over positive 1, and that gives me slope of 1. So y equals 1 x plus 1, or you could just simplify it to y equals x plus 1 is my linear equation. Also, we want to look from left to right. It is going up, so you can think of that as positive since it's going up left to right. That is a positive correlation. And I'm done with number 2. Let's keep moving. Again, I'm going to go a little faster as we go through because I think you're getting the idea of the process. Again, I'd encourage you to pause the video now. If you need to, do a screen capture, print that out on your own so that you can have a copy. And let's try it now. Our close, we have slope and y-intercept. Let's go ahead. We have slope and y-intercept. I'm going to go ahead, if you have your clear plastic ruler or ID, that looks about right. Something in that range. And now we need to play with the y-intercept to get it just right. Now, that's just a little above. 
I'm going to go right on the dot there at positive 1, 2, 3. Again, you could say positive 4, positive 2, all of that's within an acceptable range. So my club, my slope is positive 1, 2, 3. My slope, now I found the first point uh, is on the y-axis here, the y-intercept. Let's go to the x-axis and look at the x-intercept. It's probably the easiest given the circumstances. 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, that works. We'll go with positive 4 there. And now I'm going to draw my box, specifically a rectangle. I'm going to rise and run. Rise, negative 3. Again, positive, negative for the y-axis, positive, negative for x-axis, telling you the changes in the y-axis and x-axis, uh, respectively. Rise, negative 3, and run positive one, two, three, four, positive four. All right, so m equals slope equals change in the vertical component divided by the change in the horizontal component or rise over run. m equals rise over run. The rise vertical change was negative three. The run was positive four. And again, remember that the negative could be in the numerator, the denominator, or out in front of the entire fraction. So, y equals m x plus b. Remember that if I'm going left to right and it's down, down, negative. If I'm going left to right, up, up, positive. So this is going to be a negative correlation. Now, if you are graphing it and they just are very, very loosely spread, uh, in a situation like that, you would say that there's relatively no correlation. Moving on. Again, pause the video. Try it on your own. Let's go ahead and start. My close, clues, I have the slope, I have the y-intercept. Hmm, if I could write, that would be helpful. All right, sorry about that. So my close, we have the slope, M, and the winer set, B. Go ahead and sketch. All right, so looks like zero is a little low. One, two, a little high. Go with Y intercept of one. X intercept looks like it's about positive one as well to graph my rectangle. I'm going to rise negative 1, run positive 1. My slope is m equals rise over run. My rise is negative 1. My run is positive 1. Negative 1 divided by positive 1 is going to be negative 1. Also, my y-intercept from earlier we found was positive 1. I'm ready to rock and roll. y equals negative 1 x plus 1. Of course, that simplifies to y equals the opposite of x plus 1. Uh, please be careful saying y equals negative x plus 1. It's very easy to do. I do it sometimes too, but uh, that x could be negative, in which case it would be the opposite of that negative would make it a positive. So really just the opposite of x plus 1. Also, going from left to right, it's going down, down, negative. So negative correlation. Again, now would be a good time to pause the video. Try it on your own. And let's begin.
from a sketch or line. I believe that y intercept of positive 1 probably is good. Make sure it's positive 1, y intercept. On my x axis here, it looks like it also goes through positive 1. My slope. I'm going to draw my rectangle first. I'm going to rise negative 1, run positive 1. So m equals rise over run. So apply that to negative 1. y equals negative 1 x plus 1, or y equals the opposite of x plus 1. Also, my correlation from left to right goes down, so that's a negative. Again, I would encourage you to pause the video and try it on your own. And let's begin. My close are the slope and the y-intercept. Go ahead and sketch. And you notice, in my sketch, I didn't come up with a very good y-intercept. So I'm just going to move. Now, this you could go either way. You could say y-intercept of 0 or y-intercept of negative 1. I'm probably going to go with the negative 1. Just my preference. What exactly would you do if you had y-intercept at the origin. But what you need to do is to find an exact point somewhere else. For example, this point here as your second point. In fact, let's go ahead and do that just so I can show you what would happen. So if I can't use both intercepts, if it's at the origin, I need to pick some point that I can be very confident in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, hmm, looks like 2.5 maybe. That's not probably a good point. One, one, two, three, no, three. I guess I'm just trying to line it up since I don't have an axis. Four, three is not exactly on. This looks good. Okay, this lines up pretty well. So I'm going to use this point here. Use another color so you can see. So what you have to do is define a grid point that works that's right on top of your line. And you do need to be careful. I had tried to pick this one, but it's going to be right around two and a half. That's not very accurate for what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to get compound fractions, which are not very nice to work with. So my y-intercept here is going to be zero. Again, you could have used negative one. It would have made it much easier. The slope would have been rise one, run one would have been positive one. So y equals one uh, x minus one would have been a good equation. Again, I'm just trying to show you what would happen if you had picked the origin because I've been using both intercepts uh, the entire time. So our slope here would be rise 1, 2, 3, run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 3 fifths. And my equation, y equals 3 fifths x plus 0. Remember earlier I had picked negative 1 as my y-intercept and rise 1, run 1. And you notice, po positive 1 and 3 fifths, very, very close. 0, negative 1, very, very close. So this could have been an alternate line. And from left to right, this goes up. Up is positive. And again, this has been Crazy Math Productions. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please check out some of our other videos.